<laughs> well, actually, let's promo your new book right here, The yeah. Making of a Watchman. That's a good segue. It is such an excellent book. And I think this is uh, very relevant that the Holy Spirit has swung this direction right now because um, how do you know you're a watchman for a certain thing? You know, I think that's a good question. That's a that's a great question. I think it, you know, God gives us the desires of our heart. So he puts the passion in us to follow and pursue what he wants us to engage with. And, you know, think about it this way. A watchman, well, they were in the Bible, they were assigned watches. You know, there's the 12 to 3 a.m. watch, the 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 6 a.m. watch. Well, my gosh, no one watchman could possibly cover the span of the day and night. And so that's a, an example right there of having your metron or your sphere of authority, uh, which grows over time. But I think that we have to, you know, what are we passionate about? What makes us righteously indignant? You know, is it abortion? You know, I mean, I know we all hate abortion, but there are some intercessors that that's really their assignment. And there are others where they're, they're on the government mountain, they're in the entertainment mountain. And so we, it, it's the passion that God gives us for a thing where it, it almost keeps us up at night. And if it's going to keep us up at night, hey, we might as well pray, right? Yeah. And the Holy Spirit will remind us over and over, you know, it's like you can be a crisis intercessor, and, and where, you know, God is giving you like something, an SOS to pray for something, or you can be, or you can have a place where that nation that you don't even know that nation, you know what I mean? That's on your heart. I remember one time, you know, I was praying for a certain nation and this happened to me more than once. And in the early days, I didn't even know where that nation was. I had to go look it up. You know, where is that nation? That was before Google even, you know, I went to my big, globe you know in the stand and i was looking kind of knew it was probably in europe and uh so i think that that's a, a very valid point we don't want to be burned out but we also want to hear the lord and like for me and i know uh, for you also with all your houses of prayer around the world you know i'm a nation's gal you know so mm -hmm. this the, this thing haiti uh it I don't know how to explain it. It's not like a weight because God takes our burdens, but but I feel it. You know, I feel that compassion for the Haitian people. I I'm concerned, and, and you know, in Colombia and different ones, it's like the Holy Spirit will will give you a a God burden, you know, for that moment. It's true. And when we're moved with compassion, that's a great way to tell, you know, every time in, in scripture, when Jesus was moved with compassion, miracles broke out. And so I think mm -hmm. one of the, one of the, you know, I think James Gall wrote a book about the compassionate intercessor, which mm -hmm. I think all intercessors have compassion. But when we just, we were just so moved by a thing, we were just so stirred by a thing. Many times that's discerning the, the burden to pray. I was in Nicaragua one time. I was very young in the Lord and we did missions work every there every year there for the summer. And I went to there and I was I was staying in the room with the prophet. Everybody wanted to, to stay in the room with the prophet. And they said, Jennifer, you get to stay in the room with, with the prophetess because you know you're not going to bother her. You're going to respect her. So she gets up, gets ready and she goes out to the prayer meeting and I said, I'll be there in a minute. I felt so dejected. I didn't know what was wrong with me and no one had ever taught me these things. So I wasn't sure what to do. And I, I thought to myself, I don't have any reason to feel dejected. I don't have any reason to feel burdened. I'm so happy to be staying in the room with this prophet. I so admire her. And I just said, well, I'm going to go out there and just be with the people. And I went up to the, the prophet who I was staying with, the prophetess. And I said, you know, I just feel so dejected. I don't know what's the matter. I was fine five minutes ago. And she said, that's a prayer burden that you have for Nicaragua. The Lord is letting you feel what they feel. And she said, I want you to lead prayer. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes the burdens of the Lord aren't comfortable. He lets us feel what he feels for a nation. He lets us feel what he feels for a people group. And, and that's sometimes how you can tell where your assignment is. Wow. Yeah, I think that that's really good. I hope know? that's not always true in every case, because I remember we were in a restaurant in Phoenix, Arizona, actually Scottsdale. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you may remember, I told you, Cindy, I'm sensing the people in the restaurant, and it was like they were all kind of like younger, and and what the Lord was showing me was the the uh, a lot of them were hopeless that they would ever find their life partner, mm -hmm. and He was showing me that they that most of them had been through, even though they were young, uh, had been through several experiences in their life in seeking a partner and it had really turned out badly and i was feeling like this almost like a grief that was mm -hmm. in there and it, it really you know it made it difficult to be in there almost although they had great food and still 
Uh, and I don't think that was necessarily for me a, a, a prayer assignment or some, you know, long term thing. It's just that I think Cindy has rubbed off on me and now I'm, I'm a lot more sensitive to things going on in the spirit than I used to. And um, I'm not gotten to the point like she is where she's like uh, uh, she's like a knobby prophet for the for serious stuff going on like you were talking about having a burden for a nation, Cindy will just all go all of a sudden like, oh, hey, this nation's going to have a coup. And <laughs> and it's I'm going like, can I just like enjoy my life? You know? <laughs> I don't feel real spiritual sometimes next to, next to her or people like you. you know? Yeah, you have to pray for him. I mean, I don't know. He'll tell is me. that their assignment? Yes, don't that. yes that's, that's your assignment. assignment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know, I might be speaking in tongues in my sleep or I don't know, whatever, singing or murmuring or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's a little tougher or wake him up to pray, you know, but like that. Has that ever happened to you where you really just uh, um, been suddenly somewhere and you picked up in the spirit? You know, I yeah, know you're talking yeah. about Nicaragua. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, I was in, so you know this, um, Dr. Sharon was a great help to me, Dr. Sharon Stone, when um, we decided to go into London once a month in 2019 and plant prayer houses and do prophetic schools. She encouraged me to do that. She helped me to do that. She was tremendous help. But um, the last time I went to London, the last time was March 2019. And as we landed in London, we had this hamburger place we like to go to. We kind of figured out where we were supposed to be, everything, all the good stuff. And I felt like I was just going to just cry. I mean, I'm like, and I'm telling my friend that was with me, I'm like, what is the matter with me? I feel like I'm never going to see London again. I feel like somebody just died. I feel like, 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 I don't know what's going on. And I couldn't immediately discern if this was a spiritual thing or a soulish thing. I didn't know what was going on with that jet lag. What's going on? And as I <laughs> sat there at dinner, the Lord showed me this was a spiritual burden. And the day we left London in March, 2019, the next day they locked the nation down and I was not oh, able man. to go back there again. And I still haven't been back. And I have spiritual sons and daughters there. I equipped so many people in the prophetic there by the grace of God. I mean, Dr. Sharon, what she helped me and helped me and, and, and just poured out so much. And, and so, yeah, that, that and a lot of times that's how it works with me. I just had this deep, deep, deep feeling and immediately, you don't always know what it is. Even after 20 years of doing this, I don't immediately know what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes you'll feel like supernatural love for a place if you're supposed to stand in the gap for them. You know, I know that happened with me with Argentina when I went. I just felt like this is my home. I So much that I wanted to move there. I wanted to give my whole life there. And there was a joke in Argentina. I was putting the for sale sign in the yard and Mike was taking it down, you know, because both of us, you know, were trying to, figure our way, you know, and like yeah, but you, you, you're interesting in that you seem to feel that from the moment you put your feet on the soil of any place, you're a different person. There's, there's some connection that you get <laughs> with that. I'll bet you this is the same thing for you, Jennifer. It is, yeah. You walk into a place, you're, you're, it's almost like the Lord could, if he wanted to say, this is your assignment. And and because he knows it for both of you, you'd say, yes, sir, that's fine. I'll do it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love the nations. I, I, you know, trying to learn as much as I can from Cindy. She's been everywhere, but I, I love the. <laughs> I, I come alive when I go into the nations. I mean, I light up when I go into the nations. I wanted to move to London a few years ago. The Lord said no. So, oh, uh, yeah. The Lord, well, the Lord finally said to me. Look, I, I allow you to have a deep love for Argentina. This was in the early 90s, but you're called to the nations, you know, and so I have to use you for the nations. So it's very interesting. Um, some of you are watching, you know, I just feel the Holy Spirit is, is just uh, explaining some things to you, ways you've been feeling, uh, understandings. And we just want to, we want to intercede for you right now, or maybe you have felt like, your president could be assassinated or something like that. Well, that's a burden of the Lord. Please pray immediately. It's not that you're the only one, but you may be the one that is the last one that in a way fills the bowls of intercession in heaven so that Satan cannot do what he wants to do. You know, and so I, I think that, that that's very important. Uh, Jennifer, why don't you pray for people who really have that passion for nations and passion to pray right now? Okay. 
All right. So Father, we just thank you for those that you have entrusted with nations. Father, I'm asking you in Jesus' name just to anoint them for what you've called them to do and give them a grace to, to, to wade through the, the, the potential weariness that comes upon them. Light them up, open their eyes, help them to see what they have not seen before. Let them be like Habakkuk who goes up on the watchtower to see what you will say to them. Help them carve out time in their day or in their night just to sit in your presence, to be refilled, to hear your voice, to understand what the will of the Lord is for the nations. God, send them places in the spirit where their feet have not yet tread. Help them, Lord, to, to navigate the realms of the spirit, the prophetic realm, discerning what is you and what is the enemy, binding and loosing, coming up against the, 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 the opposition to your will in the earth. Father, just help them, encourage their hearts, help them to see who they are and the glorious responsibility that you've put upon them. And I just bind every assignment against your international intercessors now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare you will fulfill your obligation in the spirit, you will fulfill your destiny. And the Lord will say to you on that day, well done, good and faithful 